Yeah, well, one of the things that struck me, I live in a pretty leftist neighborhood too in Toronto. In fact, I think I'm probably more unpopular in my own neighborhood than I am anywhere else in the world, which is rather annoying uh, consequence of everything that's transpired around me in the last six years. But one of the things I was quite struck by in Toronto in particular was the two things. One was the willingness of the left to sacrifice the poor to their purity concerns. That was really quite interesting. And also to align themselves with the pharmaceutical companies because that was kind of a miraculous reversal that was virtually incomprehensible. I mean, for decades, the only enemy the left had that was as significant, let's say, as big energy companies was big pharma. And for the left to align themselves with the pharmaceutical companies struck me as a, a what would you say, a philosophical a reversal of miraculous proportions. I still haven't wrapped my head around that entirely. And I was also shocked, and I would really say shocked, by the absolute pleasure that people seem to take in the side effect of the COVID lockdowns, which was the opportunity to spy and inform on your neighbors. And my sense was that in Toronto, first of all, 70% of people would have worn those goddamn masks happily for the rest of their lives. And half of that group would have done it happily merely because it gave them an opportunity to spy on and inform on their neighbors. And you know, I knew that in places like East Germany under the Soviets that one third of citizens were government informers, which is a pretty damn dismal statistic. But I, and I knew that that proclivity was embedded deep in the heart of the human soul, let's say, if a soul can have a heart, you get my point. But it was still a shock to me to see how rapidly that desire made itself manifest when the when the social and political conditions made it made it possible and morally necessary. Yeah, no, I was gonna say I think I was naive. I did not think that Americans or Canadians or free people in general had that inside them. I knew that people who had been under totalitarian rule, who didn't know anything else. Yes, they could be made to inform on their neighbors. But free people who didn't have anything to lose were telling on people for having too many friends in their backyard. And that was happening frequently in my neighborhood. Um, another interesting uh, moment was, so I lived in this neighborhood, Park Slope in Brooklyn, and there was like a board on Facebook and um, a woman wrote in and she said, I'm Asian. I was bicycling without my mask. And an older white couple ra yelled racial epithets at me. This is at the height of the pandemic, you know, spring 2020. And in normal times, obviously, everybody would be supportive of her. And, oh, how dare this white couple say racist things to you. But the majority of the comments were like, well, you should have been wearing your mask. And that's where they got to, where they threw away their own previous ideas in order for this new mask god. Um, and it was really wild to watch that. I, I don't, I didn't expect that. Look, I'm a lifelong conservative. Um, my husband is a conservative and we were going to live in this liberal area and that would have been fine until the pandemic hit and we saw what was really going on. We couldn't unsee it. 